In the ultimate WWE-themed forging challenge, the bladesmiths go head-to-head -to, -head to showcase their skills and create impressive blades. Bladesmiths, today's competition is all about the WWE. The challenges and the tests are all inspired by the most memorable moments in WWE history. And up first, the cage match. Trapped inside this cage are stacks of 1095 and 15 and 20. Once you get them out, we want you to make Damascus billets. So they have to build a signature blades in their signature styles that measure between 13 and 15 inches. You've got three hours on the clock and good luck. Your time starts now. <laughs> When I saw cage matches when I was a kid, I just thought that was the craziest thing ever. And now here I am cutting into this cage, getting after it. My game plan is to make sure my steel stays very clean. I'm gonna hit it all on the grinder first before I try to set those welds. I could stack these up and get 10 layers, or I can cut them all in half and start with 20. I'm gonna go for a high layer count. We've only just started, and I already feel like I'm behind everyone else. They're clean. I'm doing it. I'm not cleaning these. Hunter went straight for the welder. You think that's a good idea? It's a risk. Come on, baby. So I stretch my 10-layer billet out about eight inches, and that's when I'm ready to cut and stack my billet so I can make those 40 layers. My stack took a good weld, and I'm just super excited. All right, Big Blue. You and I are going to be friends now. I feel good that my billet's solid. I'm going to start forming my tip. Good? Oh, yeah. My stack is all welded up, but I want to do something extra. I want to throw a little raindrop pattern in there. I don't know if this is going to work, but if it does, it'll look really good down the road. Now that I have a rough shape, I have to go in for the quench because I'm looking at the clock and it's running out. That is nice. Time to quench. That's a hot blade. I clean it up, throw it in the etch. I pull it out, and it's got a beautiful 100-layer Damascus pattern. That's fantastic. I like that. Smoke. All I see is smoke. I notice when I pick my blade up that there is a warp. Three, two, one. This round is over. Good work. Time for the strength test, where Dave will. Let's see who will prevail in this special WWE test. All right, Philip, you ready to go? Let's do it. I could still see that crack on both sides going across the cutting edge, but it didn't come apart. So great job on that. All right, Josh, you ready to go? Are you ready? I love it when people try to heckle me. All right, Josh, you survived. Good job. The edge on your blade, it's not super sharp, but there's still an edge there. You ready, Hunter? Yeah, let's go. Your edge, you do have some chipping here probably from too much heat in the quench, but your knife's in one piece and the chair's toast. Now to find out how sharp your weapons are, I'm gonna take your weapons and I'm gonna be cutting, gutting, and smashing this turnbuckle. Flip you up first, you ready for this? I'm ready. The areas that you have on your blade that are on the top here are sharp. And overall, sir, you will cut. All right, Josh, it's your turn. Are you ready, sir? I'm ready, sir. There are areas here that took some damage during the strength test that are not sharp. But the areas that are sharp cut nicely on the turnbuckle. But overall, sir, your weapon, you will cut. All right, Hunter, are you ready? Yes, sir. Your blade cut deeply on the turnbuckle. It is wide enough that I can be comfortable with the blade in slashing and controlling your weapon. Overall, sir, your weapon, you will cut. The bladesmith that's gonna be leaving the forges Josh, unfortunately, your blade just didn't make the cut. Man, you fought hard, but unfortunately, your time here has ended. And I'm gonna ask you to please step off the forge floor, bud. I should have put a little bit more into the sharpness test, but there's nothing I can do about it now. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm so glad I came and did it. In this thrilling competition, the bladesmiths face off to craft lethal swords inspired by Marvel's Midnight Suns putting their skills to the test in a quest for victory. We're sending you back to your home forges to bring yet another iconic weapon from the Midnight Suns to life. Bladesmiths, you need to go home and build this. The Hunter's Iconic Blade. Good luck. We will see you here in four days. My name is Paul Yale Jr. I'm from Lavernia, Texas. I'm 49 years old. So we're going to make Damascus billets with uh, ADC RV2 and 15 and 20. If I get this milled, get this handle material to sit in. They're a little difficult because they're a matching set. All right, I'm ready to start heat treating. Going into that quench is always scary. 
Oh yeah, getting straight. All right, two hard blades, looking good. That's the best I can do, what I got. That's it for now from Captain Damascus. We'll see you back at the forge. My name is Jesse Wipperman. I'm 37 years old, and I'm from Des Moines, Iowa. I decided to go with Mono Steel 8670 because I feel like spending more time making sure that the handle is the best handle the judges have ever seen. Now I'm just making sure that everything pieces together properly. I'm going to be using the Dremel to add some um, embellishments on the brass guard and pommel. I'm sure that it'll cut through anything that they put in front of it. Time for the kill test, where Doug will be replaced by his brother due to a hand injury. Jesse, you're up first. Both your long and short sword are very comfortable to wield. They've got a very nice balance. They will kill. Paul, your turn, so you ready? I'll fire up the grill. First off, for the long sword. Despite having the brass here, and what I would think is a counterbalance, it is forward heavy. The shorter sword, is much easier to wield because the handle matches nicely. We'll kill. Thank you. To test the strength and durability of your blades, I'm going to be bashing them into that big thing. Jess, you're up first. You ready? Give it hell. For the smaller sword, it took some, some dinging on the edge. On the longer one, it took some serious bending in the test. It's kicked off from the handle, and then it kicks back over at the tip there. All right, Paul, you're up next. You ready? Do it to it. It's just got so much mass to it, and it's difficult to control. Also, your edge on the small one took quite a bit of packing, but they do smash. Nice job. Thank you. Today's Forge and Fire champion is Jesse. Congratulations. Well, Paul, it's been a pleasure watching you work in this forge, but unfortunately, at this point in time, I'm going to have to ask you to please step off the forge floor. How do you feel? Speechless. <laughs> yeah. I'm Jesse Whipperman, and I'm a Forge and Fire champion, and that feels amazing. In this intense face-off with blood spewing, two finalists are tasked with the challenging mission of crafting a Tabar Shishpa, vying for the opportunity to win $10,000. We're sending you back to your home fortress to recreate an iconic weapon from history, the Tabar Shishpa. Good luck, bladesmiths. I have never made a bludgeoning weapon today. I'm gonna work on the shaft of this weapon. I've forged the handle areas into my shaft. The whole shaft is as straight as I can make it, so we'll get ready to heat treat this. That was exciting. It's like Mount Vesuvius exploding. I got a lot of work done, but I've got a lot of work still ahead of me. The first step today is get the parts of the mace cut to shape. So far, so good. All in a row. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm ahead of schedule. If I don't get this right, the rest of the time will have been for nothing, really. OK, axe head's going in. I got the heat treating done. I couldn't be happier. Let's see how it's going on day three. I need to do all my heat treating, and that's really important. I need to focus on not making mistakes. Without the heat treat, I don't have a weapon. It's an axe. I'm feeling really good. I will be spending a lot of time on the grinder today. I've found two cracks. Right now, I'm looking at two options. I can try and make this one work or start over and make a new one. I don't want to have it fail on me. So I'm going to give this thing the toughest test that I could give it. I think it'll be good. To assess the lethal capabilities of the weapon, Doug will take the Tabar Shishpa and employ both ends to deliver fatal blows on a ballistic stomach. Mark, you up first. You ready? Mm-hmm. Let's see it. It is sharp. That chopped right into the chest cavity, breaking a bone. She can see the breaking bones inside. Your weapon will kill. Hey, you. Chris, you ready? I am. Your mace definitely penetrated through the skull. Your weapon 
is heavy, and I'm not a fan of heavy weapons. Overall, it will kill. Time for the second test, sharpness test. Mark, you're up first. Are you ready for this? Mm-hmm. Your weapon's nice and light for a weapon that looks as heavy as this is. This is definitely a cutter. Good job. Chris, you ready? Let's do it. This thing hits like a ton. Your edge, there's no damage that I can feel. Nicely done. All right, gentlemen, this is the strength test. Mark, you're up. You ready? Yes, I am. Let's see it. Edge is still perfect. Didn't take any damage. Mace is fine. All right, Chris, you ready for this? Don't hold back. I can control it, but I don't have any rebound. Mace is a devastator. You made a beautiful piece. Thank you. It's hard to say who's going to win. The champion is Mark. Congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion. Thank you. Chris, it's that time. Please surrender your weapon. Ah! <laughs> Mark did good work, and his was just a little bit better. How do you feel right now? I feel great. Chris, a hell of an opponent. I'm glad it went to the very end. I wanted to see a real competition. I just won $10,000. My wife and I, we made a deal. She gets 9000 and I get 1000 So congratulations, dear. In a groundbreaking forging challenge, two finalists engage in the first ever WWE-inspired showdown hosted by the legendary Ric Flair. The heat is on as they strive for victory in this unique competition. In this last round, we're going to send you back to your home forges to build a wicked warrior's weapon from history. The Bastard Sword. So gentlemen, you got four days at your home forges. Good luck. We'll see you then. Man, I am stoked to be here on the WWE competition. I want this piece to look good. So my finger just to wrap around right there, nice and comfy. I'm deciding to temper on the clock, which pulls some of the hardness out of the blade and gives it the flexibility and the strength that it needs to put up with Jay. So here we go, putting the handle together, the epoxy sets, but I've started to notice that I have a large gap right here underneath the guard. I'm gonna kind of wrap wire nice and tight, all in there and epoxy it down into place and just kind of hide this little mistake I have. I'm gonna do a little bit of testing. Ah, yeah! My name is Phil, but they call me Sergeant Cheese Badger. I'm from Wisconsin. And the billet is solid, so I'm feeling pretty confident about it. Anything could happen when you go into a quench. It could crack or bend or warp. It's time to go in for the quench. I don't hear any pings. I don't hear any tings. Everything looks great. So I'm going through my tap and die set, and I'm realizing that the smallest set that I have is a quarter inch, and my tang is nowhere near that wide. So I'm going with the peening because I'm running out of time. I should have been looking at that when I was making my call. You guys ready to play? Yeah, always. Ready. Dave, are you ready, man? Good to go. Let's do this. Now Dave is going to test what kind of lethal damage the weapons can do. Hunter, you're up first. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Hunter, right off. It's a performer. It cut deep on each one of those cuts. As a matter of fact, that one downward diagonal goes all the way through the rib cage. You definitely got a lethal blade here. Thank you. All right, Philip, you're up. You ready? Ready. Right off, I like the scale of your blade. I mean, it's very large, but and it's got a lot of weight to it, but the balance is nice. As far as being a cutting sword, this thing is lethal. Good job. Thank you. So what's up next? You ready for this? We're going to test the strength of your swords. You ready, Jay? Oh, yeah. To test the edge holding ability and overall construction, I'm going to go through a series of WWE weapons. Hunter, you're up first. You ready to go? Yes, sir. This is actually very comfortable, even though the handle is a little bit short. But you look at the grain, it looks like sand. Hunter, it's painful to see, man. You put a lot of work into that thing, and it looks great. But you are not out of fight yet. Philip, you've got to make it through the table, through all the swings through the trash can, and you've got to make it through at least one bash into the ladder. Hunter, man, you fought hard. 
But unfortunately, during the testing, you did suffer catastrophic failure. And for that reason, I'm going to have to ask you to please step off the forge floor, bud. Well, Philip, you know what that means, man. You are the Forge and Fire champion. That comes with a check for $10,000, as well as a WWE title. Here we go, man. This title is going in the most obnoxious spot of the living room that I can find, probably taped onto the TV. Woo!